recording. So we're recording now, and what we're going to do together is um, go over some basic WordPress and website hosting questions. Uh, maybe you'd want to introduce yourself. Uh, sure, I'm Essie Lenchner, and I work with Charles at Organizing 2.0. Great, and I'm Drew Hornbein, and I also have worked with Charles at Organizing 2.0, and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna get into it. We'll start with the WordPress now. Uh, so WordPress is a, a piece of software that is running on a server, on, on your server that you are you're currently, um, that's your host, and you, and, and your, your host, um, server is is running this code that creates the WordPress website and the domain name is a human readable name that you rent and that points to your server your server runs the WordPress software and thus WordPress appears at socialist.cool so in in your WordPress, um, you have a number of things, uh, and the main ones are your post types. So that's these these four right here: posts, media, pages, and comments. And within WordPress, these are all posts. Posts just have different. There's different types of posts, and it's confusing because blog posts are called posts. Everything in WordPress is, a, a, most things in WordPress are posts. So uh, it's just a, uh, you know, they named it that years ago and we're just stuck with this sort of confusing language. But this, this top area here is where you manage the different things that are posted on your website, like blog posts, media, pictures, video, audio, pages, and uh, comments and they all have different attributes and they kind of mean different things and as you add more function to WordPress as you extend the function of WordPress it might add more you know different types of posts so you might have a plugin that gives you um, a portfolio and then you can like add items to a portfolio that are separate from pages and posts and really uh, the the, the two the two main ones here are posts as in blog posts and pages and there's there's a technically there isn't much of a distinction the but functionally blog posts uh, are are like they're time bound they were published on a certain date at a certain time and they are generally presented in chronological order with the most recent post being at the top. That's your standard blog. Um, or in this case, your a news site is, it has the most recent articles, which is just another way of saying blog post, those appear at the top. And we can kind of get into the nitty gritty of all that later on. Um, over with pages, they of course, are published have a date and a time when they're published but they're not organized by their published date they're organized by um, uh, they're organized as sort of static content so you might have a post about the election that's going on right now and you're you maybe you have a number of posts about the election and you want the most recent one to show up at the top that's what a post is good for. With pages, that's for content that isn't time bound. So your about page um, or your, you know, your editorial guidelines page is something that maybe it is updated, but it's always in the same place. It's always, uh, you know, on your navigation bar. Um, it's, it's, it's meant, it's, longer term content that is is meant to kind of stick around and and be there and 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 not and and not disappear as it becomes old like it's sort of 
it, they call it evergreen. You know, it's your, it's the, it's, it's a way of, it's simply just two different types of posts that, that serve, that serve slightly different pur purposes. One being chronological, one being static. So, uh, great. Let's talk about, um, the, how, how WordPress works in general, uh, by, by talking about themes, plugins, and maybe some of the settings. So, uh, WordPress is, is, as I said, is a piece of software that runs on your server that's hosted essentially on someone else's, on someone else's computer that you pay to stay up uh, online so that anyone in the world can access the front end of your site. On the back end, uh, WordPress has two main features that extend it. So WordPress is sort of the base um, and then you use themes to, to change the appearance of the website and you use plugins to change the functionality. So here under appearances, we have themes and uh, a little trick is that the, the first thing on this list uh, is where you go if you just click the button and we can see that you have the news pack theme uh, activated and then you have these 2019, 2017, 2020. These are the default themes that come with WordPress and they release one every year uh, and that's, that's why they're here. It's good to have at least one of them installed in case something goes wrong with your theme and you need to um, activate, you know, you know that the 2019 theme will always work with, with WordPress because it's kind of designed by WordPress. Um, Does the backend of WordPress generally always look the same regardless of the theme or can themes change? Great question. Uh, so WordPress, the WordPress backend will always look generally the same. Uh, themes can add Themes and plugins will add different like tool sets. So like down here we have SEO and video tutorial. These are being added um, by by either a theme or a plugin. I know SEO is a plugin. So um, we can click on the news pack, and um, you know, and here's the picture that's loading particularly slowly for some reason, but um, yeah, the theme, the theme uh, is, is like the look of the, of the site. So let's go over to the front, front end and see what, we'll let that load. Quick question. Can yep. you generally tell if something is a result of a theme or a plugin, or is it not a clear cut between the two? It is typically not a clear cut. Like you, before installing a theme or a plugin, you should do a little bit of looking into like what that, what effect it will have. Um, mm -hmm. And generally themes stick to the, the front end of the website. So this is, we're in the back end and then the front end is uh, what the public, the public facing side of your site go through the rest of the um, appearance uh, menu. So we have our themes. That's where you select which theme your, your WordPress site is is active, what is active on your WordPress site. And that's what, you know, changes um, the look of everything. Uh, and that's like the broad, broadly speaking, the look. It changes the theme. Uh, if we if we were to go and change the theme to 2020, we'd still have this hello world post. We'd have um, you know categories and like the data is the same, but when the theme changes, it changes how the data is presented. So it's the it's the presentation layer. So uh, over here is the customization. So what this allows us to do is is look at the the uh, look at the website and 
uh, and then change things. So uh, we have these nifty little blue buttons that, that let us edit things. So if we wanted to edit uh, the, the title, we could, we could, you know, we could change this to, um, you know, socialist cool. And then, uh, you know, we're just changing out. It, it, it's giving us all these different elements to edit. And mm -hmm. this is where, so the theme itself sets a lot of these, um, these options. Some of these options like additional CSS is gonna be available in almost all themes. So if you needed to add some CSS code, which is the code that changes um, things about the uh, things about the, the site. So typically if we go uh, you know, I can like write code in here that that changes the style of the website that overrides or adds uh, things about the style. And that's gonna be something that almost any custom, any uh, will be a, a available for any theme. But things like uh, homepage settings, header settings, this is all stuff that's, that's added by the theme. So the theme not only changes the, the look and feel, but typically adds options into this customizer menu. Um, you know, it's, it's adding like, it's adding the select logo and the logo size and the footer logo. Um, whereas like the site title and tagline typically come with every, um, come with any theme. So some of these things are going to be specific to this theme and some of the customization options are going to be, uh, fairly global. Additional CSS is global. Uh, the homepage setting, header settings, these are all stuff that the theme brings in. And what this means is a lot of the work that you're doing to get your theme looking how you want it to look is going to happen through the custom customizer um, uh, tool here. And the cool thing is that it's it's all live so you can you can mess around with stuff and you can see how it works and then just like uh, a post you you make changes and then you publish those changes by clicking this button so we're not going to publish that I'm just gonna I'm gonna back out of this um, and one little tip on publishing we actually have this gear here that lets you publish it which will make the changes you've you've made and set them as the, the, the settings for the live site. So when anyone, you make a change, you publish it and then the live site changes. But you can also uh, save as a draft or schedule. You know, if you, let's say you were setting up, um, you wanted to do election coverage and you wanted, you wanted to change the look and feel of your website on election day so you could do the work ahead of time and then schedule it so that at 1 a.m. Uh, that happened okay so uh, we're gonna we're gonna back out of the customizer tool this is this is definitely a place where you want to like play around and and just start poking around and it's very forgiving because you can you can change things and then if your uh, and then as long as you don't hit publish, it'll go away. So you'll notice that, uh, you know, it's going to warn me, hey, you're leaving. You're going back to the to the dashboard. I just click this X in the top right. Um, okay, so that's customization. That's where most of the work is going to happen. And then there are, uh, along with your theme, uh, are widgets and menus. So in each theme the theme itself will set areas for widgets and areas for menus widgets are um are are, are like small encapsulated um features that uh that can be added into certain places on the website so um and this this dialogue that we're looking at right now is is how we edit widgets on the back end. But there's also a space 
um, for m messing with widgets on the customizer. So you don't actually have to leave the customizer to, to fiddle with widgets and, uh, and menus. And the nice thing about the customizer is one, it's, it's, it's live. So you can see here, I'm on the customizer, I've gone to widgets, and then I went to the sidebar. This area right here is the sidebar. And we can see that there's a widget for search, recent posts, recent comments, archive, and that maps. Uh, and actually, as I hover over these, you can see there's, you can see on the right, as I hover over them on the left, you can see on the right, they get uh, highlighted. And so if I wanted to, I could edit the recent post and say, latest news. And you'll see that it, it updates right there. Um, you know, super useful. And there's options for like, oh, let's display the post date. That makes sense. Um, so the on the back end, the widget section here is exactly the same. And you can see search, recent posts. Um, and then there's these other widget areas. And, and so the the distinction here is very minimal, but um, on the customizer, it's only going to show you the widget areas that are active on the page that you're looking at, whereas this will show you kind of all the widget areas across the site. Um, and the widget areas, like the sidebar, wherever the sidebar appears in the theme, these widgets will appear in, in there. Um, so if you if you go to two different pages and they both dis to play this display the sidebar, they're both going to contain the same widgets. And with plugins, you can you can get plugins that will allow you to you know say this widget only shows up on these on these particular pages, um, or in these con particular contexts. Uh, so that's that's an example of how you know anything you want to do with WordPress. Typically, someone's written a plugin to do it. Um, so, for example, if we want to have members uh, of this website with member-only content, there would maybe exist a plugin that allows for registration in the first place and maintains that information, and then maybe has some kind of member-only content section. Would that be like a plugin, theoretically? Yes. That can do that. Yes. So, WordPress has a core functionality of users, which we've already gone over uh, but that 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 core functionality can be extended uh, to create with like membership plugin pro or, or there's certain plugins that will that will create more of that membership experience that you're talking about so yeah um, but we'll get to plugins in just a second I just want to hit menus uh, so with inside of our admin area we can we can go to the menus section and of course in customizer there is also a menu section so the way that menus work they're, they're they're a lot like widgets where the theme defines areas that hold widgets and it defines areas that hold menus and a menu is a collection of of links um, that then appear in a certain menu area. So uh, let's start with the basic um, in the in 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 the back end. Again, we're looking at the customizer version of menus, and we're looking at the back end version of menus. Same thing, just a different view into the same thing. So. Um, I think that what I wanted to show you right here is bring your attention to these checkboxes. And these are the different area, different menu areas that this particular theme uh, has registered with WordPress. So you have a primary menu, a secondary menu, a ter tertiary. tertiary menu, thank you, a topic highlight menu, and a social links menu. And in your theme documentation, it will tell you more about these menus and what they're used for. Uh, but let's go over to the customizer and we're going to create a new menu through here. So uh, I'm going to click the create menu button. 
we're going to name this menu. And the thing with menus is that um, you are creating a list of, of posts uh, or a list of links as a menu, and you can create a number of them that aren't associated with certain locations. So you could have, um, you know, going back to a the like election result, you know, your your election coverage. Um, let's say that you've changed up your your the look and feel of the site a little bit, uh, and you also want to have you want to change your main menu from what it from what it you know what it normally is to have like a couple extra menu items specifically for the election coverage so you, you could create two different menus and then s sort of swap them out um, and I'll show you how to do that so we'll call we'll call this the main menu and I'm going to select a menu location you don't have to select a menu location but uh, we're just going to put it in the primary menu and we're going to hit next and then you can see this like there's this empty space that has appeared here uh, and that's the primary menu and then we need to add items so we're going to add uh, click this add items button and it gives you this this you know this this dialogue that kind of gives you a bunch of different uh, uh, places to, to grab from so like we want to to take the we want to add the home the home and we're gonna add the sample page and we're also gonna go into posts and add the hello world post and we're gonna go into categories and add uncategorized uh, if you had more categories they'd appear here um, and then we can also put custom links uh, like to um, you know the organizing 2.0 dot org and we need to make sure that we put uh, the HTTPS and the link could be like org 2.0 and we can add that to the menu so we now see that on your on the top here we have these different menus uh, different menu items and we can rearrange them over here we can we can uh, we can nest them we can like drag them under each other and then that creates these drop downs and yeah so that's that's a menu and then uh, let's say that we want we could actually add this same menu to three different you know to these three different places and so you can see it's the same menu if I move things around it updates on all the locations that the menu is there but let's use this as the primary menu and then we can uh, oh and then there's another option with menus to automatically add new top level pages so typically you don't want to have this checked you want to have you want to like maintain control but if there is a situation where like every time you added a page you wanted to make sure it went into a particular menu uh, you might add it there so we're going to back out of this and create another menu and we'll call this a special election menu and we could add this as the tertiary menu hit next just add some uh, random uh, items to it There. And then you so for election week, in theory, you could have a whole tertiary menu that isn't there typically. So you can either replace an existing menu with a new temporary menu, or you can create a brand new menu somewhere else. Right. But that's exactly right. You can have you can create menus that don't appear on the site until you add them to a location um, on the site. And for every theme that you're using, the the location areas are going to be different. Um, not every single theme is going to have a secondary and tertiary and top topic highlight menu, um, for instance. Yeah, what's the question? Yeah. So it has to do with menus. Uh, my experience with menus so far is that I would first go create a page 
and then I would insert it in the right menu. So it always be page first, then insertion into menu. Is that, does that have to do with the theme that I was using? Is that just an odd way to do things? Like that's the way that I. That's the, that's yeah. the correct way to do things. So oh. if you, if we look at this ad, when we're adding a menu uh, or an, uh, an item to our, to our menu, we can go to this drop down that shows our pages and you can see that uh, we only have two pages because those are the only two pages that exists. Um, now there is a way to add a page from right here. So you could say uh, about us, click add, and it will, this will just create the page um, and it'll be a blank page. So that's just a, that's just like a little workaround, but typically you're going to make the pages first and then add them to the menu. Um, All the items that you were adding to the menu were existing items. For a second, I, for some reason, I thought that you were just like making up names as you go, but I was wrong. You're actually selecting specific things to insert into the menu. I, I was in, but in the case of the main menu, when I add it, there is a type of menu called a custom link. Ah. And the custom link is if you wanted to link to something outside of your website. If you want, so it does give you the ability to just put a URL in, and you and you could, you know, say slash about us, and make an about us page, but this is the bad bad way to do it because what happens is, um, with if I if I if I use the about us page, if I add the about us page, then it's linked to in the system whereas in a custom link it the system doesn't realize that this page is an internal page um so if like we if, if somewhere along the line you said "Ooh, about us is too passe let's let's do something fun like who we are it won't update but if if the page name if i add about us and i change the page name it will actually update the name of the page on the menu. So it, it's a pattern within WordPress is it's always better to, um, you know, use, use the, the tools that like link things so that if one of, if one of them changes, it updates it in the other place. Um, right. Yeah. So let's get out of here. This isn't saving for some reason. That's fine. Um, and of course, uh, let's actually see if, yeah. So in, in this, in, in this other same, same exact, um, this is the same exact thing going on. Uh, but you're just, you know, you can make, you can make your, um, you can make your, you can build your menus out in this dialog from the back end rather than from the customize menu and you know, and you still have the same, same thing, but I, I suggest doing it through the customized menu. So that is your appearance area. Next up we have uh, plugins. And this is, um, this is, this is where you are managing the, the things that sort of like give you extended features to the, to the site. Um, so you already have, you, all WordPress websites come with this uh, Askamet anti-spam and Hello Dolly. Hello Dolly is just this like, I'm not exactly sure why they always put this plugin in. I think it's just to have a plugin in the plugins zone. Um, so you're pretty safe to delete um, this one. I would, I would recommend if you're gonna have comments on your website, uh, activating the, this anti-spam plugin uh, and yeah so let's look at let's just look at uh, each each of these or kind of the the, the plugin uh, as a whole so it has a name it is either activated or deactivated uh, you can delete it as well so when you install a plugin it just installs the code on your host computer. And 
the plug and then you have to activate the plugin. You kind of have to turn it on. So you like install it and then there's like a switch to turn it on. That's what this is. It has a description and uh, and then down here you have a version number and the author and then you have details. So I can click view details and it brings this little pop-up box and uh, you know loads up uh, the information from the WordPress plugin library. And this is great um, to, to use if you're, you know, this, this, is, this is basically the documentation. So it tells you what the features are. Uh, it has a tab here for, to, to explain how to install it if there's any extra steps. Usually there, there aren't, but some plugins require you to do other things. Um, and then the change log is useful in some plugins. Like if you update a plugin, just give a glance at the change log to see like, oh, it, you know, it might, it might change something that you need to be aware of. So, um, and then you can read reviews um, from people, which typically aren't that helpful, but sometimes are. And then you can see that the this particular plugin has a new version, and it ex and you can see the the details of the new version. It just takes you straight to the change log, like I was just explaining, um, and. And then you have this button that allows you to update. So if I click update now, this little thing spins and it updates. Um, super straightforward. And then over here on the right, you have enable, enable auto updates. So this is a pretty new feature. And what it does is it auto updates the plugin. So if there's a new release of the plugin, it will update. So the thing to keep in mind with auto updating is that uh, typically when you are updating your website, almost like I'd say 95% of the time with WordPress, when I update the theme or I update a plugin, nothing changes, everything works as expected, um, I, I, I run into no problems. However, there are some times where, um, especially on more complex plugins, and I would say plugins that are like mission critical, uh, you probably don't want to auto update. You want to um, go through a process when when updating it, and I'll I'll get to um, I'll get to the update process a little bit later. But essentially, uh, 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 the anti-spam, like if this plugin, well, first of all, it's by Automatic, which is the creators, uh, the, the people who kind of maintain WordPress. So you know that it's like written by the people who are maintaining WordPress. So it's gonna be very stable and always up to date. Um, and it's not mission critical. If you're, if you're an anti-spam thing updated and it broke, uh, you would just start noticing more spam comments, and it, it like it wouldn't be, uh, it it wouldn't cause the website to crash. To crash. <laughs> um, so it's like pretty safe to turn that on. Um, whereas if you had like your membership plugin, you would maybe not want to um, do that. Uh, okay, so that's the basics of of a plugin. Do you have any questions on on that? Um, no, nothing that we really need to get to now. I guess uh, down the line, I'm curious about where does one go to explore plugins? What if they're cool ones I don't know exist that are useful to me? Yeah. Uh, but that's more advanced. I don't need to know that now. Yeah, and curious. and and generally, so there is there is a there there's a, there's um, you know, we can we can if we click this add new button here at the top, it will bring us to a plugin library, and you can like search. So membership, and and it'll, it'll you'll see like oh here's paid membership pro. Let me look at the details of this, and it gives you you know it tells you about it. You can read the reviews, so you have a pretty decent. Um, 
you can have a pretty decent plugin experience right from right from WordPress and uh, you know it's really neat like it tells you how many active installations there are uh, whether or not the author of the plugin uh, says that it's compatible with the current version of WordPress you're you're running when it was last updated so if you come across a plugin it was like updated six years ago that probably means that the plugin isn't maintained you generally wouldn't want to install such an old plugin uh, but then that then you might go and like read reviews and see what's going on and if it's just like something that's so simple that it just never needs to be updated that's a thing um, and then a, a great uh, and then once you if you you know from here you can just like look up like ultimate member WordPress plugin reviews and and get more in-depth reviews just by googling around um, yeah. and then uh, same with appearance there's there's a plugin editor which allows you to edit the code of plugins and you generally want to stay away from that don't 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 futz around with that um, so I think that 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 base that's that basically covers your plugins uh, it's it's good to do your research and you know generally look into that um, let's see we've got users we are going to create a new user um, this is on Essie's machine so what you're going to do is you've gone on the left hand bar you've gone to users and you've clicked add new um, and so you're going to create a user account for me uh, you give me a username typically this uh, first name is great and then you can stick my email in there, which is drew at dhornbine, D-H-O-R-N-B-E-I-N.com. Uh, you don't need to worry about these other unrequired things. Uh, for the password, it's gonna kind of automatically assign me a password. So you don't need to worry about that. Send the user a notification. So you would, you would do this um, when you do this, it'll send me an email and then I'll be able to log in uh, and you want to make me an administrator, but the role determines um, what capabilities I have. So the typical ones are subscriber, contributor, author, editor, administrator, and then SEO editor and SEO manager has been added by one of the plugins, the SEO plugin. Uh, the subscriber is is like a kind of uh, it's exactly what it sounds. It's someone that subscribes to the to the website, um, but doesn't have any kind of editing capabilities. A contributor is someone who can contribute to the website, but doesn't have publishing abilities. So a contributor can write a post, but it takes um, an editor or an administrator to actually publish the post. An author has the ability to write posts and publish them as well as edit their own posts. So, um, you know, if you were running a news site, you would have, you might have a bunch of editor or authors who are able to submit and post things. Maybe you have a few contributors who are, you know, novice and they need editorial help. Um, and then and then you have editors who can edit and publish anyone else's posts. And then the administrator is all of the above, plus the settings and a bunch of the like plugin management and stuff. So it's, it's kind of useful to, um, to have someone on, to, to give people only the credentials that they need. And that just, that just makes their experience of this back end a little more simplified. And we can probably go over that in a moment. But make me an administrator for now and hit add user. And then uh, you see me there. I'm, I'm in there as a user. And then I'm going to just go into my email and log in. So uh, now we're back. I've, I've, I've logged in. 
and now you're seeing me on on my screen uh, in the in the back end dashboard so as an administrator I have all the uh, I can access all of all of the things uh, I have kind of full control over the site um, so let's go uh, back I'm, I'm back on your screen and why don't you change my um, change my my role and I think you can do this by yep going to edit and changing the role drop down and change me to uh, an author and then make sure you go to the bottom and hit save and that's going to be a common uh, pattern within within uh, WordPress is you fill out a form and then there's a blue button typically at the bottom. So I'm going to switch back over to my screen and this is what it looks like for uh, an admin because I haven't refreshed the page. And you can see I have access to the settings, I can do stuff with users, I can do stuff with plugins. Now I'm going to reset the reset here and you're going to see a bunch of those things go away and we'll just have like for a moment there's a so 503 that was a, a a server error so there's just some hiccup in the server and my computer is like hey server i want to do this thing and the server is like blurp i whoops i messed up um, so anytime there's a 500 error you know it's a problem uh with the computer that is hosting the website rather than like your computer or, or some other uh, problem. So anyways, we look, we look at the dashboard and you can see uh, now my dashboard is way, there's way less stuff going on here. So um, that's just a little look at that. So let's go back over to you and switch me back to an administrator. And then we will back over to my screen and refresh once again and then you can see boop, all the things um, all the options come back so you're you're giving the your um, the, the people who are working on a site you're kind of like you want to give them as much stuff as they need but not more than they need uh, that just helps with someone being like oh I'm gonna update a plugin because I thought it was just on my computer I didn't understand it will save you a lot of headache in in the future we have tools and tools is sort of this like catch-all kind of um, space uh, one of the things that is fairly new to WordPress that's really useful is this site health um, tool and what it does is it's is it scans your your website and will give you some recommendations for what to do with it um, so you know it's saying like hey you shouldn't have inactive plugins that's a minor security risk um, you should remove inactive themes it's, it's a bit of a liability to have you know code you're not using on the site because if one of these plugins uh, had a security vulnerability and it was on your server there's like a potential for problems there. Uh, but this is just a, a good place to go and double check um, that, you know, just to be like, oh, is what's what's up with my site? You know, it's just like the thing about WordPress is it 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 requires some maintenance um, as there's always new updates and there's plugins and and all that stuff. Um, this is also where you have um, the export and erase personal data. So this is uh, for the GDRP, I think, GRDP. Basically, oh, yeah. the, there's WordPress. Um, one of the great things about WordPress is because it's a global commons resource, it's going to have like, it's going to be, you know, they had to add this stuff so that all these WordPress sites that were in the UK or were in the European Union rather, could um, you know are are able to the basically this there's this this rule that got created that said you have to be able to 
give people their data when they request it and fully delete data. So uh, anyone can kind of, it's just built into WordPress, which is just a nice, um, a great thing. So again, here's this 503 error. That's just saying the server is not available to handle the request. Uh, the request is, hey, go to this web page. Um, and typically if you refresh, it'll go away. Uh, and, and usually those errors are, the back end is more prone to those errors because the back end is like doing a lot more where the front end, you know, it's not, you don't need to get too worried if you see a 500 error every once in a while while you're on the back end. Um, and you can ask your hosting provider to like help you out with that. Um, and we'll get to that also later. So yeah, so there's the tools. And then finally, um, and this is also where you can import and export posts. Uh, and sometimes plugins will add themselves into the tools section. And then finally you have the settings. And I'm just gonna uh, kind of walk through the WordPress settings here, um, just to give you a general idea of what's what's happening and this is like kind of akin to like your operating system has you know like the control panel or if you're on a mac it has the the the, the general settings and then there's all these different um uh you know there's all these different configurations that you can do uh and wordpress is the same you know it, it's a piece of software running on a computer and it has its own settings. Um, so the first one is the general setting. Uh, this is where you can change the site title and tagline, and you'll remember that this setting is in the customizer thing. So because WordPress has this like long legacy, there's a lot of redundancy in it. Um, and typically you wanna like try to do everything in the customizer. That's just gonna be a better experience, but you can also, um, you know, find that stuff here. So uh, the next is the WordPress address and the site address. I'm not exactly sure. I've never heard, you know, it's like after 15 years of working on this, I don't exactly understand what the difference is. Um, but this is going to be a place where you're, you're going to run into trouble sometimes. Um, so let's say... Uh, and this is actually a great place to talk about HTTPS. So if we look at the website right now, up here it says not secure, which means, uh, which is kind of scary, but all that means is that uh, the, the client, which is me, and the, and the server, which is your web host, the, 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 the computer that has WordPress running on it, they are connected and they are not using a secure connection. And, and so uh, if I was at a coffee shop, someone could be like snooping around on the Wi-Fi and see that, uh, you know, a request to socialist.cool went through and maybe, uh, you know, it, it wanted to go to like the hello world. So someone could see what you're doing. If we had a secure connection, they, could see that there was a connection made between somebody on the Wi-Fi and a website, but they wouldn't know what pages I was visiting or um, anything like that. This is a this is a big problem for your login uh, because you are sending your password at an unsecure site. It's also a problem for your search engine optimization because Google and other search engines will deprioritize unsecure sites. And so um, a secure site will have an SSL certificate, meaning secure socket layer certificate, and you can get those for free. That's something that you uh, would work out with your hosting provider probably. So that's a little aside for you, um, but it, 
comes into play here because once you have a secure connection, you want to make sure that you set this to HTTPS. And then, um, you know, this is, this is basically telling your WordPress that this is the URL. Uh, whenever it working, it's working with the URL, it's going to look to these, the site URL or the WordPress address and use whatever address you tell it. So if, um, so a common problem is you'll get your certificate, you'll install it, it's all ready to go, but then you like click a link on your website and it takes you to the unsecured version of the website. Uh, and this is, and this is the, this is that place that you're going to go. So just remember, um, if you leave with one thing about the general settings, it's, uh, the, with, with a secure connection, this is, this is like a place where you can overlook. Um, then you have your administration email. That's just the email that any notifications are going to get sent to. Um, if, you know, if a new user is created, it'll go there. It's good to have this email address be something that you check because if a new user gets created and you and you know that you and no and like no one would have done that, uh, that's a big red flag. Right here, you have the membership uh, option, uh, and so it's like the membership is kind of built in. Meaning that any and, and if you check this, anyone on can register, and you can set what what they are, uh, what their what their role is. You definitely don't want to have this on. Every WordPress website in the world is constantly being um, attacked by robots that are just like going to your login page and trying common login names and weak passwords, and then. Uh, and then we'll do nefarious things that they can get in. So there's, so you can kind of think of it as like, you know, you don't want to, unless you're like really sure about that you're doing membership, you don't want to have this checked. Um, site language, time zone, date format. These are weak starts on, this is typically stuff that doesn't matter. Um, but you know, if you're on your, the front end site and you're like, ooh, I don't like the way that the, the I want the date to be different than this. You, this is where you can, you can change it. Any questions on the general settings before I move on? No. Cool. Uh, so then we go to writing. Um, nothing really that important here other than the default post category and format. Uh, if you wanted if you had a, a category for your blog posts, you know, maybe it's like general, this is the place where you could change that. There's also this um, setting to let you post via email. Uh, so that's like a possibility. But yeah, it's, people typically don't do that. Then we have reading. This is an important um, setting for how your your home page displays. So right now you can see you got your home page, you got your sidebar over here on the on the right, and then you have this blog post. And if you added another blog post, it would pop above this one, and then they would just kind of like go down the line. But you can also set your home page to a static page. And then you have to select which page you want your home page to be. And then you also select a page that you want to display your posts. Um, so you would create a page maybe called posts or blog, and there'd be no content on that page because WordPress would actually replace that particular page with this, this blog role, as it's called, the, or the, the blog, um, the list of blog posts, the list of most recent blog posts. And probably in this particular theme, there's a bunch of settings um, to change, stuff like that, uh, which you can get into. And then you have some settings on uh, how many blog posts to show on a particular page. So if you had over 10, pa 10 posts, it would only show the first, the latest 10 posts on this front page. Uh, and then the syndication feed 
is your RSS feed. So if I go to socialist.cool slash feed, I think this will work. Yeah, this gives you um, a like a computer readable version of of this. So you can see um, right here, there's an item and its title is hello world and there's the link and you know, there's the description. Uh, that's that's just, uh, you know, if you had a feed reader, it's pretty, almost no one uses this stuff anymore. Uh, and then you have for each post in a feed include, and this is where you can set a full text or summary. Uh, that's just a way of, um, you know, this is showing you the full text uh, of this particular post. So if we go to this post, we can see there's the title, there's the byline, there's the, you know, entire uh, bit of the post. But if this was a really long post and you had your setting to summary, it would cut it off at a certain point. And in your post, when you edit your post, you can actually set, um, you can kind of set where that cutoff happens. Uh, but this typically, you're not going to really futz around with this, um, and your, th your theme typically dis determines that, so you don't really need to worry about that. Something, I think the most important um, item here is this search engine visibility. You can check this box, and it will ask politely that search engines don't display this website. So that can be very useful if you're like develop it when you're developing this website to have this box checked. But once you launch the website, you have to make sure that you uncheck this box so that search engines will come and hang out. Questions on that one? No, but I am thinking that as I play around with this website, I can hide it from search engines. Yeah, and it's just like, <laughs> What I would recommend is um, creating a launch checklist and, and just having on there like, you know, under settings, reading, make sure search engine visibility is unchecked. And now this doesn't stop search engines from doing stuff. It's just, it's like literally like putting a sign up on like your yard that says, hey, please don't prowl around on my yard, but bad actors can come and prowl around on your yard. It doesn't actually like stop you from being indexed. Um, okay, the next section is discussion. This just has to do with how comments are um, handled and there's a bunch of settings. You can disable comments here. Um, you can decide how like many nested comments can appear. Um, you can, you can, have like um, set sort of comment moderation rules. So if you notice that people are like trying to sell you um, Xanax pills in your in the comments, you could like put common words in in here. Uh, and this is also where you set up your avatar. Um, so like when someone leaves a comment, you can you know you can like have these like auto-generated uh, images or whatever. Uh, this is something that, you know, you can kind of explore on your own time. The media setting, this is an important one for when you are uh, kind of planning out your website. And what this does is it determines how your images, when you upload images, it determines the size, uh, like WordPress will take your image and it will automatically create a large, medium and thumbnail size. And this is where you can set the limits of those. So on the large size, it's 1024 by 1024. So it'll, it'll scale the image proportionally until no, the width and the height are no larger than 124. 
the thumbnail will actually crop the, the image to 150 by 150. And you can, um, you can actually change that with this little checkbox here. So there's certain situations where, um, you know, maybe the theme uses the thumb, use, like wants larger thumbnails. Uh, typically, you probably won't ever have to mess with this, but you might notice that when you make posts, the, um, so like a pattern that I do is when uh, I might upload a, a photo at full resolution and then when I put the image into, a, into my, my post, I'll use the large size rather than the original image size because it's smaller, thus it loads faster. Um, and, you, and, and if that image size is like too small, you might up these numbers to like 1600 or something. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions here? Yeah, is uploading like um, a very large photo, does doing this automatically resize it? Because I thought you had to sort of resize it outside of WordPress and then upload a smaller file. Well, there's a few, there's a few caveats, right? Like this does resize it. So when you upload a photo, it saves the original version of the photo that you upload and it creates three different sizes. Um, and, and so if I take a picture on my, you know, fairly new cell phone, it's going to take like a, a giant picture and, and images on the, the web have two different sizes. They have their dimensions. So the width and height, of the image and it has the file size which is essentially how many pixels are within the image which is how much data is contained within the image and uh, and so the the two sizes are related the, the the more width and height the more pixels there are the more total pixels there are so larger pictures dimensionally will have larger file sizes. Smaller pictures dimensionally will have smaller file sizes. Uh, and so when you're uploading a picture, there is oftentimes a maximum um, file size that, that the picture can be to be uploaded. So if I take a picture at full resolution, it's 10 megabytes and my web service only allows me to upload pictures that are five megabytes, then it makes perfect sense to, uh, then, then I do need to like resize it um, outside of the website. And you, you just don't want to be, there's just never, almost never a situation where you want an image that's gonna be like many megabytes large. Um, because it's just slow. Like if I'm on a, if I'm on my cell phone, the picture's coming in this as like a tiny little thing, and uh, and so you know it can like a, a cell phone is about four hundred pixels wide. So if I have a, a landscape painting or picture that is like four thousand pixels wide, it's just it's it doesn't make any sense to be serving that up. On the web uh, but and that's why and, and but like there might be situations where you want to offer the full resolution uh, and that's why WordPress resizes it so that you can like stick that picture elsewhere on your website at a smaller resolution uh, one thing you might do is actually have the medium size image be like ten a thousand pixels and have the large size be like two three thousand pixels uh, and then uh, so that you, when you, when you op, when you put an image on your website, you can say, oh, use the medium size because it doesn't need to be that big. It's not a high resolution picture. We don't want people to click on it and like get the full resolution image. Is gotcha. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a quick tip, uh, Essie. Um, everything that Drew says is right and, and smart. And I would give slightly different advice, which is, you should not have any picture on your website unless it's like a goddamn photography website that is wider than 1500 pixels. 
1500 pixels is wide enough that in almost every instance, it's going to work out fine, including like a tablet. Um, uh, just one second. Um, uh, and if you only, if you change that in all sizes as part of the upload process, like you upload it and there's a little link that says edit photo in there. And you just make sure that you just don't have anything over that size on your website at all, unless you have a very specific reason to it. Because even though you might not use large photos, if you end up with a site full of huge photos, even if they don't display, which is what Drew is showing you, it's still there. And over years, you could end up with like these vast amounts of photos that are useless to you. Yeah. Tell her how I'm wrong, Drew. No, Thank that's you. that's that's exactly right, voice of Charles. Um the this get this this will get into hosting and i i think we're actually pretty close to ready ready to get there um but we'll return to that but but essentially yes if you're uploading 20 megabyte uh photos and even if you're only using the smaller images that are automatically generated by wordpress you're still sticking 20 megabyte photos onto your server and eventually you'll run out of space, just like on any device. You have an allotted amount of space and it'll fill up with photos and then, you know, what are you gonna do? And there's there's plugins that will kind of like automate this process for you. So if you're finding that you don't want to be constantly like resizing pictures and, you know, saving them and then uploading them and um, there's, there's plugins that will like do batch resizing and and manage um, the, the photo stuff. But that's, yeah, you, you just don't need, like this screen, I have like a pretty large monitor and this screen is, uh, you know, maybe 2000 pixels wide or so. Uh, yeah, good, a good rule of, well, yeah, like 1080, by 1080 is is what like um, or 1080 by 1920 so 1080 uh, by 1920 like that is what Instagram uses as it's on its like that's the size of a, a phone screen essentially um, so that you know like that's a good uh, 1920 is like a good like with and no more than that is like great. Uh, okay, so let's just go get through the last of the settings. Um, the permalink settings, this changes how links show up on your website. I like to use post name so that it's just like the socialist slash the page name rather than, you know, all this, this like date stuff going on here. Um, but essentially, permalink is the place where you you set this up, and you want to like give this some thought and set it, and then never change it because uh, WordPress will do some redirecting, but it's just better not to ever change your for for like your search engine optimization. It's like pick pick a pick something and stick with it. Most people don't even understand. I would venture what a URL is, how it works, like why you have this bunch of letters here and then how it relates to the, the domain name and then to the page. So you just really have to pick something and you're, and, and leave it that way. Um, and the SEO plugin up here is like gonna give you this warning and will tell you, you can click this link and it'll like explain to you more about that if you have the SEO plugin. Um, and sometimes you'll have, uh, you might have a problem where like all of a sudden you're getting 404 errors and, and like the, the like going to web pages isn't working or you'll notice that uh, you'll like go to a page and it'll look like this where it says like question mark P equals one, two, three. Um, if you have, if you have problems like that, going to the permalink page and just hitting save changes will sometimes fix that. So if you're ever having issues with um, like getting to pages and, and pages not loading, 
uh, sometimes this is is a is a, a, a quick and easy fix is just to like literally hit save changes because what that does is it just refreshes the rule set that manages that and and can help uh, gotcha. yeah any, any so that's that's it the privacy policy um, is is mainly for the European Union rules around having privacy policies you should probably have a privacy policy it's just I don't really know about it but um, yeah you can it's just a thing that is available to you so the final thing we're going to look at is we're going to talk about updating uh, or this the final thing we're going to talk about within WordPress is updating uh, WordPress and this is basically just a uh, I'm going to run down best practices so with WordPress um, the best practice is to always keep the core you have, you have three things that get updated you have the core themes and plugins the core is the actual like operating system that is WordPress it's the thing um, when you freshly install WordPress you are, that's WordPress um, and then you have themes and plugins on top of that and and so um, once this well as this is loading uh, so your, your your core updates are um, split into three there's there's three numbers here so um, this is the updates page it's it's under the dashboard option and it just gives you a kind of an overview of everything that needs to be updated so this is saying you've got the latest version of WordPress and it's 5.5.3. The first number is the major version number. So we're on we're on WordPress 5. And then the second number is sort of the, the minor version number. Um, so like when this first number changes, that's like a big deal. That's a huge deal. Um, that means that there are like fundamental updates. Now with WordPress, uh, everything is is backwards compatible so you know updating to the new version isn't going to break anything however uh, it means that there's like a major update so you should just be very aware mm -hmm. the next number is the minor update um, so as thing you know as things are updated that that will change things but they're not like monumental updates it's a little you know it's a little uh in the eye of the beholder i suppose uh but whenever these either of these first two numbers change you know that it's a it's a fairly major update and then the third number is sort of is the patch number and and this is the this is the number to look out for so when you update your web when you update if it is uh, you know, 5.5.1 means that it is the the first update that has just changed either uh, the, changed the minor update. And if it's 5.1.1, that means this is the first update of a major update. And the the little rule of thumb that I like to use is um, waiting for the point. Uh, for this this third number to, to be two or higher um, meaning that like they'll release an update and then before I update to the next so let's say I was on version 5.4.8 um, and then 5.5.1 comes out I'm gonna say ooh I'm gonna wait on that one and wait till 5.5.2 comes out uh, because that mean like the it means that like some of this the when a major update happens there's probably gonna be some bugs and you want to wait till they've like patched the obvious right. bugs 
You're basically saying you don't want to be the beta tester of the latest thing. Precisely, precisely. Um, but for the most part, the updates are all like I've ne- I've just like never had an issue where I updated something and it like totally broke in a way that was like not clearly my fault. However, what you want to do is when there's an update, you want to back up your 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 site and you can usually do that through your hosting provider and we'll get to that in a little bit uh and um you and so the the process is back up your site install the core update and then install the plugin install the plugin updates and the and the and the theme updates And if you're going to be very careful, uh, you are going to install everything one by one and you're going to go onto the website and and like poke around and test it out and make sure that nothing major has 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 changed. Uh, You don't have to be, you know, it's like if I'm updating the Yoast SEO, like this is not a a, like I said in the when we were talking about plugins, this is not a critical plugin that if it broke, if it totally broke unless it did some side effect to my site, it's not gonna like destroy a core functionality of my site. But if you have a membership plugin and you're relying on that membership plugin to hide certain pages and to let members log in, you're definitely gonna want to install, you know, do a backup, install that update, and then try to log in as a member, try to sign up as a member, um, run run a series of, of tests. Um, and just, or at least, at the very least, just like go to the membership page uh, and make sure that like the buttons are still there. Uh, and then the same goes for the theme. Um, and you can back up between each of these. It's, it's kind of your, what level of risk you're willing to take on. And it depends on um, your web host and the volume of changes that happen on your website. So most web hosts will do a daily backup automatically. And you, so you can like, and, and, and so if you're doing, if you know that there's a daily backup happening and you also know that your website is not getting like 300 comments per day or has like 15 authors that are constantly adding new content every day, then you can be pretty, rest. you, you can just like update the WordPress website and the chances that anything will happen are very slim. Uh, if you do have high turnover, um, you definitely want to make a backup at the moment that you're gonna update and then, and then hit the update button. And, and then once you start to manage larger websites, you're probably gonna have a system where you have like uh, what's called a staging server where you have a server that's running the exact same website in the exact same configuration, uh, but it's, on its, it's in its own space uh, so that you can update it and run tests and be like, okay, yes, nothing broke. Now let's update the live website. Uh, and that's where um, yeah, once you're at that level of, you know, if, if people are like constantly on the website, you need to be doing, you, you can't, you can't afford to update you it, do. have something break. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's the, that's the general, the order of operation, back up the website, run the core update update maybe update the the minor plugins do another backup update the major plugins test update the theme test and you should be good um and yeah and so from this page you can like select plugins click update and it will go through the process of um updating and you'll, as a side side note, you'll notice that the the SEO um, is saying that we're blocking access to robots, which I don't remember saving, but must have. 
I changed it. Oh, you did that. Okay, great. So that's that's nice. That's a nice thing that this plugin does. Is it? It's going to continually bug you that that's going on. Okay, so that's that's a uh, an hour and forty minutes of WordPress for you.